this science to the sun god Vivaswan, and Vivaswan instructed it to Manu, the father of mankind, and Manu in turn passed it on to his son Ikshvaka. The mysterious knowledge of man's relationship with the Supreme is thus imparted down the ages by a chain of disciplic succession, but in the course of time, the chain was broken and the science lost. Today, that very ancient knowledge is being related by me to you, because you are my devotee and can understand the transcendental nature of this truth. The Bhagavad Gita is the essence of Vedic knowledge. It goes beyond the material world as we know it to describe the very nature of existence. It leads us on a journey that seeks to explain the fundamental distinction between the temporary material body and an eternal spiritual soul. The Gita sees life as a search for the only permanent and infinite principle that sustains the universe. The Param Brahma or Supreme Being. As one of the great cornerstones of Hinduism, its basic credo has an unmistakable universality, which is both relevant and contemporary. For the Gita is about living, not having. It's about love, not hate. It is about the joy of harmony, not the bleakness of despair. As a religious and philosophical text, the Gita originally appears as a section in the epic poem called the Mahabharata. And although it is widely accepted as an independent work, when read in the context of the Mahabharata, it acquires a unique significance. The theme of the Mahabharata is the great fratricidal conflict between the sons of Pandu, the Pandavas, and their cousins, the hundred sons of the blind king Dhritarashtra, the Kauravas. Essentially, it is a battle between good and evil. The Mahabharat has several narrative strands that are skillfully woven together to present the Sanskrit history of the ancient world. At one of the Mahabharat's most dramatic points, just before the onset of the terrible war fought for a kingdom, the Gita appears as a discussion between Krishna and the warrior prince Arjun. Yoga of Universal Form Vishwa Darshan Yoga In the 10th chapter, we learned how to recognize God in every object. In the following chapter, Krishna blesses Arjun by revealing to him the actual perceptible form of the Supreme Being. The Universal Supreme Form Arjun tells Krishna, O oh, Madhusudan, I want to see you in your complete cosmic form. If you feel that I have the capacity to behold you, please show me your imperishable universal self. Manyase yadita chakyam Maya drashtu mete prabhu Yogeshwara tato me tvam Darshayatmanamavyayam The Supreme Being in His Cosmic Manifestation encompasses the past, present and future. The desire of Arjun forms the basis of the 11th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna is boundless affection and love for Arjun and therefore this chapter comes in the form of a blessing. First, Krishna confers divine sight on Arjun 
to enable him to see this amazing huge manifestation of the pervading spirit of the universe.